Hello everyone, in this video you will learn how to port your existing scenes from Unity standard pipeline into any HDRP or URP projects. Firstly, find the folder assets, Terra World, Core, Common, Scripts, Editor in your project. Unzip the downloaded zip file from Terra Unity website somewhere on your computer. There are two scripts, one for scene converter and one for grass rendering. Drag and drop the script export scene to SRP into the folder which we have selected at the beginning of this video in project. An option will be added to Unity menus under Tools, Terra Unity, Export Scene to SRP. By selecting this, TerraWorld's converter will export the existing scene. In this case, built-in stylish desert template. TerraWorld will create a Unity package file in project root named SRP Scene, which can be imported into your HDRP URP projects. Your scene package is now exported and is ready to be used in any new or existing SRP projects. I have already opened up a new URP project. Let's import the provided package into it. Click on Import button to start importing the converted assets which have been automatically detected by TerraWorld's converter. It may take a few minutes before everything is imported based on the package size. You can now load the desert scene originally exported from the standard Unity project. You will find the scene empty-ish with pink materials, but don't panic. There is one final step needed to reveal and render scene elements with the help of Unity's material upgrade process. So, back in Unity, from the menus, head over to Edit, Render Pipeline, Universal Render Pipeline, Upgrade Project Materials to Universal RP Materials, and hit Proceed to convert materials suited for URP. Now let's focus on our terrain and see the converted scene closely. Also don't forget to replace the downloaded massive grass script file with the one in the URP project. Please note that you may lose some custom features like terrain's anti-tiling or color correction, vegetation's wind, snow and etc. But you can go ahead and tweak each material settings or completely change their shaders to any URP supported ones if you wish. I have now opened up a HDRP project. Let's import the same converted scene package into our HDRP project. Let's load the desert scene. Again, we need to upgrade imported materials to suitable HDRP ones. Let's do this by going to the menus. Edit, Render Pipeline, HD Render Pipeline, Upgrade from Built-in Pipeline, Upgrade Project Materials to High Definition Materials. Let's check out the word in scene. In an outdoor HDRP scene, we need to have sky and fog volume component added into the scene to properly set up lighting. You may end up with a dark scene at first, but once you click on the directional light, lighting will be calculated and updated accordingly. Let's take a better view of the environment and set the fog effect to bring some mood to the world. Since we are coming from standard pipeline, it's always good to tweak lighting settings to match with current renderer.
As always, you can go ahead and replace any material for the world elements or change its settings as I do for water surface now. Let's also set up material for the grass blades to be double-sided with proper settings. We can always access generated world layers from the sub-objects under Terraworld game object and scene hierarchy. In this case, we find the grass layer to edit its material taken for rendering. Here you can see the comparison when grass blades are rendered double-sided versus single-sided. The cool thing about TerraWorld Scenes is that it comes with all editing tools embedded, even though TerraWorld interface is not running. I'm now going to change some settings on world layers and alter densities and other options to fit my taste. You will notice that any changes to layer options will bring immediate feedback without regenerating the world again and again. That's what makes TerraWorld's editing tools a must for level designers via a powerful real-time editing system. TerraWorld's World Tools is also available to batch edit all layers in the world from one place. World Tools can detect any height map or texture changes of your terrains via its live sync feature in real time. Let's add a texture to our terrain and paint it as a pathway and filter vegetation on it. To filter model's placement where a specific terrain layer is painted, we head over to the placement filtering section. And from the list of terrain textures, we can set an exclusion value for each layer individually. So that all layers will filter placement based on that texture where it is underneath the model. Having live sync feature on, let's paint and sculpt terrain in some places and check layers syncing with new height changes. In order to have proper rendering of grass layers, we need to replace a script from the downloaded zip file at the beginning of the video. Search for the word Massive Grass from the search bar at Project Pane and locate it. Right click on the script file and delete it. Now head back to the downloaded files folder and drag and drop the massive grass script file, where we have deleted the old one in the project.
As a side note, if you need smoother rendering of grass patches while navigating the scene, find the grass and plants object. And from massive grass component, decrease max parallel job count value. For comparison, I increase and decrease this value for you to see the loading speed on grass patches. Higher values will speed up the loading of grass patches, but heavily affects performance, especially when dealing with dense layers. So since my target genre of game is slow paced, and the character is not moving super fast, I'll set this value to 1 to save performance, and reach a smooth FPS in game mode. Now to bring in some fun, I've already imported a vehicle package which I'm going to add to the scene and drive with it. Let's find the car prefab in the project, and drop it anywhere we wish on the scene and roll with it. Let's add switch occlusion culling component on camera to turn off real-time occlusion culling for now. Switching real-time occlusion culling off will save some performance and avoids occasional disappearance of the models in front of camera. Let's also add a follower component for the car so that the camera follows player. Now that everything is set up, let's get into the game and start driving. Since we have decreased the speed of grass loading, you will notice that grass patches are gradually loading, and you will need to wait longer. As you noticed, our player car goes through models in the world, and that's not what we want. Thanks to the player interaction system in TerraWorld, we can add this component to any game objects in scene. And it will handle all kinds of interactions such as physics and collisions, or any interaction logic you may think of. As we add this component to any target in scene, in this case our car, it will reveal all existing TerraWorld layers. We can activate or bypass each world layer from here or change its interactivity distance radius based on target position. But we leave all settings as default for now. We are all done for now, let's have some fun.